Hey y'all, this is Benjamin Roberts with Rock the Registry, um, asking you to think like a test maker, not a test taker. So if you're interested in more content around how to ace the registry exam and go on to a successful life as an x-ray technologist, please like and subscribe. I'm always excited to be sharing new content with y'all. Um, and I'm particularly excited today because not only are we talking about one of my most favorite parts of anatomy, the wrist. Wrists are just funny, they're interesting. Um, and the bones there are, are particularly highly test worthy when it comes to like writing exam questions. Um, but I also am excited because I get to announce a creative partnership between um, pathological publications, my publication brand, and Timid Monster. So Timid Monster is a local filmmaker um, here in, in Memphis where I'm stationed. And we're going to be partnering with them in the future. So I encourage you to check them out on YouTube. And I'll have some information down below in the links um, for just some interesting movies and uh, and also some movies that we'll be producing this summer. So talking about the PA wrist, um, question again is just how do we evaluate a PA wrist image? And I think that oftentimes um, when we when we learn imaging procedures, it's important to just think about evaluation criteria first and foremost, because if we understand bony anatomy and how the images are going to be uh, evaluated, oftentimes this allows us to figure out shortcuts with how best to position for procedures. So I'm partnering with uh, Wiki Radi Radiography in order to provide you these images. So thanks again to them. Um, I did alter this image a little bit in that I added an X or like a, a kind of a red crosshair where hopefully the central ray would be located for this PA wrist image. Um, and I also changed the collimation on it slightly, but it is available there on web their website and I have a, a link down below. So the central ray again should be at the mid-carpal, ideally, um, when we see the image, it should be pretty much centered on the capitate, which is the largest of the carpal bones. Proper collimation will include, of course, all of the carpal bones, distal radius and ulna, um, and then the proximal half of the metacarpals. And so this may be uh, clipped a little bit close, particularly in that first metacarpal. Um, but again, uh, it's sufficient to show all the carpal bones. And then you want to see an open radio ulnar joint. That's one way of evaluating to make sure that the, the wrist is appropriately positioned um, in terms of rotation. So it's just another way of saying that there's no rotation or minimal rotation. One of the things that we'll do with the wrist is that we, we will um, flex the digits, and this just presses the wrist closer to the image receptor. Um, and so it allows for more open spacing between all of the carpal bones. But we do not want to excessively flex the digits such that portions of like the distal phalanx show up close to or superimposing the metacarpals that are evident on the image. So as we instruct the patients to flex their fingers, I think it's best just to kind of um, almost imagine that they're holding something between the uh, distal and proximal uh, phalanx of their, of their fingers. Um, that will allow for sufficient flexion um, in order to press the, uh, the carpal bones closer to the image receptor and, and open up those uh, spaces between the carpals. Now, there's lots of great uh, mnemonics and ways to memorize stuff related to wrist anatomy, so I want to uh, just kind of point out some of those for you. The first is, I, I grew, I'm a child of the 80s, and so we grew up saying rad in a really non-ironic way. Um, and rad meant, you know, like, thumbs up, that's cool. And so I just remember, if you can remember rad, like, thumbs up, it lets you remember that the radius is on the, um, the, the side of the thumb. So thumbs up, I've got, I know where my radius is at. Um, and so I know like where the radial styloid processes and things like that. And then from proceeding from that radio sty uh, radial styloid process, I can figure out what, how the bones of the, the wrists are oriented by remembering this mnemonic. Some lovers try positions that they cannot handle. Um, and so you start with the scaphoid. So I'm basically moving from if we're in true anatomic position, like this left marker indicates, um, then I'm moving from the distal, the proximal distal row of the, I'm sorry, proximal uh, lateral row of the carpal bones. So with the scaphoid, that's the proximal most lateral of the, of the, uh, of the carpal bones. And I'm progressing toward the more medial aspect of the anatomy. So I've got scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, pisiform, and then I move to the distal row of the carpal bones and I'm resetting back to that lateral side so with the trapezium. And one way to remember that is the trapezium goes with the thumb, right? 
Um, if that mnemonic isn't helpful enough, which I think it is a pretty great mnemonic, trapezium goes with the thumb. Just remember that if you were swinging on a trapeze, it would be very nice to have a thumb if you're going to hold on to a trapeze. So trapezium goes with the thumb, again, going back to the rad mnemonic. So trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, again, that largest wrist bone that we want to be centered on, and then the hamate. And the hook of the hamate is also palpable there. Um, some of these wrist bones are palpable, so it's something that I encourage you to kind of engage with, and these mnemonics help just, again, in understanding what it is that we're palpating. So thank y'all so much for um, everything, and please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share. Check out Tim and Monster. I've got links to their YouTube page as well as their uh, website down below, and if you check out their website, if you join their mailing list, um, they even offer you some uh, opportunities to see some free movies. So thanks, kids, and have a great day.